The Rewatchables, presented by Blue Moon. Most rewatchable scene. We'll start here. I just wrote down, Khan goes to the plating company to get his money. That, I just, I have <laughs> Khan goes to the plating company. <laughs> Three hours, you will pay me my money, $185,000. It's also, we, a, get, we get to see Farina for the first time there. <laughs> uh, I love the the office too. It's like the eight horrified people just working in this 1981 office. When, when we worked in an office, that's what, how CR would enter my office. He would always come in and move the chair on the side of my desk so he yeah, could so see whatever like, was happening what you, on my what desk. What do you want, Chris? And I'm going to be like, I'm here to do business with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, this is a podcast company. What do you want? <laughs> so good. Um, we have to put Willie Nielsen's big scene in here. I don't know how I feel about it. It's complicated, but it's fascinating. There's incredible eye contact stuff going on. It seems like their faces are a foot away from each other. They're just, and, we, and they never stop staring at each other. It's like, Almost a staring contest. Willie Nelson is he's just I don't know if he's a good actor, but I, I enjoyed watching him try to act, I guess. It is a she, wild scene. The Oklahoma scene in in Juliet is is really, really intense. There's some real vibes going on between those two guys. I get the impression that Michael Mann doesn't have a lot of friends, but the friends he does have, he has insanely intense connection to. Yes. You know, he is like we don't just talk about what happened in the ball game last night, we talk about what is in the true nature of our souls. Yeah. Like that is, you can sense that he is pulling from And the fact that the, the Pruno operation got busted up. <laughs> <laughs> More, well, Morris's Pruno operation. <laughs> it's a scene that you're not positive is working, but they're both so into it. And then it really pays off at the end when he just does the, I don't want to die in here, Frank. Not in here. It's just fucking great, Michael Mann. It's really good. I I really like that scene. I don't know if Willie Nelson is a good actor, but I like that he's in the movie. Next scene, <laughs> the diner monologue, which is the reason we're doing this podcast because I think I texted Chris like two months ago. I was just flipping channels and it was on. And it was like a minute before the diner scene started. And then I was just watching the diner scene. I was like, oh my God, this is like one of the great scenes. Um it's the best moment of Khan's career, I think. I think it's better than any Godfather moment. I think it's better than any other thing he's done in a movie. He basically lays out the entire spine of this character in four minutes. Um, we'll get to the part later about what was the relationship between these two people. <laughs> we have that later. Put it this, this is, way. It's in This is nits. my favorite first date in movie history. <laughs> it's the most... <laughs> He, and it's funny because we always joke and heat about why you're so interested in what I'm reading, lady, and that fight ends up with falling them in love. So it's basically the same that's a, that ridiculous is a, premise for love. That movie, like the Edie and Neil date is like something out of a Nancy Myers movie compared to this date. <laughs> <laughs> Where James Scott is two hours late to picking her up. His make good is like, what do you what do you bust my balls for? Let's go get some coffee. What he else you got going her on? And pulls her out by They my go shoulder. get coffee, they scream at each other the entire drive to the diner go into a coffee shop and she's like my ex-boyfriend was a coke dealer <laughs> and then he's like you're waiting on a bus that's never gonna come it is so compelling Khan said it's uh, the scene of which he's the most proud of in his career and then the wide shot they filmed it at some Howard Johnson's in Illinois that man had a connection to wide shot some some heat DNA, although in heat they don't have you never see the two guys. So I think that's how he tried to make it different. But uh just a memorable scene. Sean, what was your reaction when you when you saw it again when you rewatched this? It's an amazing piece of filmmaking. And I think one man is clearly a guy who's obsessed with drinking coffee at midnight. And frankly, I relate. Jesus you know, Christ, I, I, know. I just I really relate to that. That whole idea of it's really late and we need to get coffee. But I think in addition to the diner part, the most underrated part of that whole sequence is after he pulls her out of the club when he's late and they're in the car and he's given her the speech and he's like, let's get on with this big romance. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what? What happened? I, I love the idea of two people who have never spoken to each other, who've been looking at each other for eight months and they've made eye contact and they know, they're, they, they, they know there's a connection. And so they've cut out all of the games, right? That's what he's interested. He wants to cut to the chase. I, I crack safes. I'm going to crack this love affair as quickly as I can. And James Conn being so impatient with somebody that he is planning to spend the rest of his life with is 
fucking hilarious. It's That's so, so good. This guy is so precise in every other part of your life. Every th- every time there's a one last job movie, I always don't understand. It's like, why don't you just ask her out after the last job? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Do the last job <laughs> and then be like, guess what, baby? I'm rich because I just got all these diamonds. I'm point. on my way out of town. One way ticket. We're going to Panama. Car. We're gone. Like, I, there's no like. I'm gonna move you to the suburbs, but then I'm gonna stop coming home at night, <laughs> and then I am gonna weirdly go to L.A. for six weeks. It's like no. We'll just be like the one last job is done. Now you and I go to Disneyland. I never the one get last it. job, and then this woman is complicating. <laughs> Just how you're supposed to do the one last job, basically. Yeah. That's a Michael Mann recurring theme. All right, next scene is the uh, the elevator scene is like weirdly harrowing when you're watching it. Like just how they do it when they cut this square and then he looks down and it's like this 40 floor shaft and he's like, okay, cool. I'll just dangle over this and cut. And you're like, what are they doing? How are they doing? And then you realize like, oh, they're getting the wires to cut the thing. Just the precision of that scene is... Michael Mann at his best. And it leads to them breaking in. But I actually weirdly like the elevator scene more. It's fun to watch them crack the safe too. But I, I watched the movie with uh, my wife. for the She was watching it for the first time last night. And anytime people were talking, it seemed like she was riveted. And anytime... They were, was drilling. they were drilling something. She was her iPad was in front of her face. And, and, and it's interesting because like I, I think we we skip past the first safe crack too, but I think the that opening sequence too is really, really great, especially you get that that shot where he yeah. goes into the drill and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, oh God, this is okay. This guy is obsessed. He's got a keyhole sized camera. But I still find that stuff really cool to watch. Every single Me too. particular bit of procedure. And then last is the ending. Yeah. I have some issues with the ending, but I think it's really fun to watch. I do like that he just, you know, it's the typical, this guy's getting revenge on everybody and at the end. I love so that what, it hinges on a Taglia getting a glass of milk, though. Mm, <laughs> you want some milk? Pretty great. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think about the fact, well, this is, so this isn't the ending that he wrote. Uh, at the ending he wrote, he, he reunites with Jesse at the end. What do you think about the fact that we just see him kind of walking off into the distance in the final scene? I would have liked to have seen... Uh, the girlfriend again. A reunion. Yeah. 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 I thought that would have been just a little bit more satisfying. I get the point that it's like he's a man alone, right? Mm-hmm. He work he has, he's best when he works alone and he doesn't want to be encumbered by the business of 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 these these criminals. But I don't know. We we're, we get all invested in Tuesday well throughout this whole movie, and then he puts her in a car, and then what? What happens? Yeah, I guess I, I kind of feel like when he burns the the vision board postcard, he's sort of giving up that idea of himself as somebody who could be happy. And that like to do what he does and to be what he gone through, go through what he's gone through, he can't really like make himself emotionally available. Although James Conn is certainly emotionally available. Uh he can't really do that with a woman. And so also he did, you know, he did just murder five guys. So the, the <laughs> heat might 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 be still on him a little bit. It's funny. So he has Michael Mann has this movie where he has to send the wife packing. Miami Vice, which I think he had a pretty big imprint on season one. The the greatest episode, the two part, the two part uh, Calderon's Revenge, where it seems like Sonny Crockett's getting back together with his wife, and then realizes it can't happen, sends her off, and then Heat, the same thing, right? He walks away. He's 30 seconds. If you can't walk away, blah, blah, blah. And he's Amy Brenneman's in the car and mm-hmm. the hotel's blowing up. <laughs> and then Neil's just kind of walking by her and going, but that it's a recurring theme in the man movies. It's weird too, because hasn't Michael Mann been married to the same woman for like 50 years? Like, why does he have these weird representations of like this woman will hold you back and get you killed in an airport <laughs> hangar? Like, what is it? <laughs> why does that always happen? It is one of those things where if you're the wife after like the seventh time it happens in a movie, yeah, you're, you're like, do you like, want to talk hey, about trying to tell me here? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Do you you want to go get coffee at midnight and tell me about what's going on? <laughs> do you regret not walking away from me in 30 seconds at the Howard Johnson's? Uh, oh, what do you have for most rewatchable scene? Uh, I think it's probably the, honestly, for me, it's the diner scene with Tuesday Wells. Me too. Me, me yeah. too. Okay. Today's most rewatchable scene was presented by Blue Moon. Blue Moon on a mission to bring some brightness in your life for freshly flavored Valencia orange peel. Subtle sweetness balanced by hints of Corlander. And let's face it, we could all use a bit more brightness these days. 
I know uh, I know James Cotton's character in this movie could celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Ale. Mm-hmm.